all of you welcome back to yet another video in this video we'll look at the javascript roadmap for a blockchain developer that what topic you have to prepare and learn to foster your development and become blockchain developer and these are topics is very crucial when you will start working with a smart contract when you're going to communicate with the blockchain for fetching the data and there is a lot of similarity when you will learn about the solidity programming language we follow the class structure model so what topic you have to learn in javascript because javascript is such a big programming language and if you start mastering the javascript language it's going to take a lot of time so, so in this video we'll focus on those important topic which you have to know as a blockchain developer so you can faster your development in javascript there are a couple of topics which you have to cover before you actually move to the salty and smart contract development so the very first topic you have to know about variables that what is variable how you can declare a variable how you can manipulate those variable when you will call into the function and how it can declare as a global scope so you have to understand every single thing about the variable. Once you're done with the variable, after that you have to move to data types. So what type of data type we have exactly? Because when you're going to write the smart contract and when you're going to pass the data into the smart contract, data type is very important. Like we have UNT, we have call data, we have string. So that is very important. So you have to know that what type of data types we have in the JavaScript. So second is data type. After data type, you have to learn about data structure. I'm not telling you to be master in it, but you have to have a basic understanding that how you can design a basic data structure. So when you will make a request from your smart contract, you will get a raw data. So how you can design the data in more efficient way so you can display in your DAP. So learn about the basic data structure. After that, you have to move to equality comparison because we're going to build a lot of if and else statement for checking multiple condition if the user is already logged in and if he's already created a contract so in that scenario we have to know that how equality comparison exactly work so that's the fourth topic so once you're done with the equality comparison after that you have to move to the loops and irritation this one is really important because when you will get a data from the smart contract and when you will make a api call to the blockchain you will get a data in a form of array or maybe you have designed your own data type so when you will get the data sometimes we have to check for a condition that whether the user is connected or whether the user is already registered into a smart contract so we have to check and that data is available in the array so we have to do the comparison so in that scenario loops and irritation plays a very important role so you have to know that how exactly it works how you can use this for each loops in the react and next.js and how you can reuse it in the normal javascript structure so you have to understand about the loops and irritation once you're done with that after that you have to know about the control flow that when you are calling the function that how the flow is taking place within the contract because sometimes what happened that first we have to check the balance of the user then we have to perform the transaction and pass the data into the contract and once the transaction fulfilled we get a data from the contract and that data we have to set into our backend so there is a multiple stack of functions that are dependent on one another and we need the data in proper sequence way so you have to know that how you can design a proper flow in a single transaction so the data pass separately in each of the component in each of the places like in the back end in the smart contract in the local storage so you have to understand about the control flow after that you have to know about the function that what type of function we have we have normal function and we have async function so how async function exactly take place so you have to know it's a very simple topic but you have to know mostly in all the application which you will find nowadays we use the functional based component but how you can convert that into an async functional based component so you can simply get the data into a more synchronized way after that you have to learn about the asynchronous behavior because sometimes what happened that we make a api call and the data is taking a little bit time for coming from the backend or maybe you are getting the data from the blockchain or you are using any third party provider like Chainlink for getting the data about the cryptocurrency so which you can display in the DAP. So this data is taking a little bit time. So you don't want to block the entire execution of your code. So you can simply use this asynchronous behavior, fetch the data in the background and the front end code is going to be executed. So that kind of behavior you have to know that how you can create that kind of scenario in your code. So prevent any kind of bug. So you have to know asynchronous code. After that, you have to learn about working with API. We have multiple methods, multiple tools, multiple packages we can utilize for making an API call. So you have to check which one is more suitable for your program, which you are writing. Like if you go with the front end API request, you can go with the fetch or you can go with the more advanced and going to be better architecture design. You can follow XCS package. So you have to know which one you're going to use, how you can make an API request, what are the data you have to pass into the header as per the authorization. So you have to know all of this. 
because making an API request is just a simple thing because sometimes what happened those API provided they want us to send an authorized header so how you can define that so these are the things you have to know it's very important after that you have to know about the class structure that how you can build a class structure use that in multiple places in your application for example that you have built a function which is a reuse of model and you want to use the same function in multiple places all you are doing is simply passing a proper data format and it will give you the desired result which you want so you have to know that how you can build a class constructor because this is the structure we're going to follow when you go to write and learn solidity smart contract development because this is the exact structure we follow which you will learn in the class constructor so this is very important and this is the modern way of development in terms of react and next.js application so learn about the class construction after that you have to know about the modules because recently there is a lot of things are happening we have the classes we have the modules so how you can import the packages in the project how you can define the modules how you can define the normal imports those are things you have to know so these are the couple of important topics so these are the important topic you have to know as a blockchain developer because this is what you're going to use over and over again in all the application we have built on our project and um, again i'm going to provide you this pdf in that i have highlighted that what exactly you have to learn in each of this topic so if you talk about the variable i have this variable so what do you have to learn in this variable and in the same way we have for data types and all of that so i'm going to provide you this pdf so you can simply go through that understand but these topic which i have highlighted is very crucial which you're going to use over and over again when you're going to interact with the smart contract interact with the blockchain interact with the backend api for getting data and displaying in the format how you can irritate that how you can design in a proper format this is very important so you have to master each one of this topic you can see we have a lot of project we have built on our channel so you can come back to the resource section there you will find that all the resources i have provided for the react d5 blockchain javascript roadmap so you can come here click on this get now and you can get this pdf and you can simply follow that if you come back to the projects we have built on our channel we have multiple projects close to 35 projects we have built and all of these projects are heavily javascript extensive so i would encourage you to come and have a look that what project we have built if you haven't built any one of the project make sure to build that because when you will build the project you will understand that what exactly happening in the functions how you can utilizing all of the methods which we have talked about it that how you are declaring variable how we are designing the data type as per our front end because sometimes we have to design the data design the array as per our front end the way we have to display the user then we have to display the nft then we have to display and calculate the pricing that's all you will learn so make sure to build all of this project at least five projects you have to build the one i would suggest you nft marketplace build this chat application decentralized voting app uniswap clone real estate so we have a lot of project web3 application tools that's all we have built so when you will build all of this project is going to help you and give you a proper understanding that how exactly an application get developed in the real world when it's come to blockchain how you can communicate with the blockchain how you can get the data how you can get the communication with the contract with multiple contract and then you can make perform the transaction there is multiple things are involved so i would encourage you to come and build at least four project one for nft one for DeFi. One for chat communication, one for decentralized organization. So we have all of that project which we have here. So you can build this one, decentralized voting system. You can build this chat application. You can build this Uniswap clone. You can build this NFT marketplace, crowdfunding, supply chain. Check all of the project we have on the channel. This will help you a lot. But this topic is absolutely must for a blockchain developer. If you're a beginner, you can simply focus on that. Or if you are an advanced developer, you have to know all of this topic which is very important. In that way, what will happen? You will faster your development. You're not going to spend much time learning all the things which we have in the JavaScript. So it's going to take a lot of time. But if you master all of this topic, it's going to give you a proper idea that how JavaScript programming language exactly work. So you can start building the project. And that should be your first motive. The more project you will have in your portfolio, the higher chance you will have to get job and internship. This is very important. So make sure to come and check all of the project. All the startup files are given. All the projects videos are there. Simply follow. And build project so that's the only thing i want to cover in this video hope you guys have got an idea that what exactly you have to do what you have to do and what topic you have to follow in javascript roadmap for a blockchain developer so see you in the next video have a wonderful day bye, -bye.